Welcome back to the Deep Dive. Today we're jumping into uh, really quite a cosmic enigma, something that had astronomers scratching their heads back in 2025. We're talking about the interstellar comet, three Ayatollahs. So our mission here is to unpack the sources you sent over, explore these really bizarre observations, and, well, the pretty surprising ideas that came out of them. We're piecing together the story of this visitor from well, way beyond our solar system. And that's the key thing, isn't it? The interstellar part. We're not just looking at, you know, one of our usual neighborhood comets. This thing came from outside, from around another star entirely. Wow. Yeah, I mean, just imagine that. It's like a messenger carrying secrets from a whole different stellar system. It's such a rare chance to actually study material from somewhere else, you know? Yeah. Gives us clues about how things form out there. Okay, let's get straight to the weirdest part, the thing that immediately jumps out from the sources. Three IA to last. Yep. It looked like its tail was pointing towards the sun. Now, maybe explain for us, why is that just instantly fundamentally wrong? Why does that set off alarm bells? Uh, yeah, it's a great question because it basically breaks one of the most fundamental rules we thought we knew about comets. See, normally a comet's tail gets pushed away from the sun. Two things do that. There's the solar wind, that stream of particles blowing out from the sun. Right. And then there's the sunlight itself, the radiation pressure. Both push stuff gas dust away. So it doesn't matter if the comet's coming or going, the tail always points away from the sun, like a windsock, basically. Right. Simple physics? Pretty much. It's uh, Cosmet Rule 101 for comets. <laughs> so when the VLT, the Very Large Telescope, got observations showing what looked like a tail pointing at the sun, well, it wasn't just odd. It was, like you said, a glaring contradiction. It forced everyone to stop and ask, you know, hang on, is our basic understanding wrong here? Yeah. Or is that thing we're seeing not actually a tail? A cosmic rule being broken. That's dramatic. Yeah. So, okay, if it wasn't a normal tale, what was it then? The sources you share dig into this leading idea that it wasn't gas or dust being pushed, but maybe a reflection. Sunlight bouncing off something described as a uh, rough, nickel-layered surface. That sounds pretty wild. It is wild. And the idea of a nickel-layered surface on something from interstellar space, that's hugely significant. Why nickel, specifically? What does that tell us? Well, nickel itself isn't super exotic, but having it form a distinct layer on a comet-like object, that's unusual. It's like a chemical fingerprint from its home system. For an interstellar object, finding something like that suggests maybe something about the uh, the metallicity of its parent star system. Metallicity, meaning like how much heavier stuff was around when it formed. Exactly. Elements heavier than hydrogen and helium, a high metallicity system might form planets differently. Or maybe it came from a really enriched nebula cloud. Or, you know, perhaps it suggests something about the object's specific history, its journey through space. Could it have picked up this layer somehow? Getting this kind of compositional detail from an interstellar visitor, it, it, it's like uh, getting a rock sample from another solar system. It opens up so much about the diversity out there. Right. It turns this thing from just a weird comet into potentially a probe of another star system's chemistry. That's fascinating. Okay. So besides this reflective surface idea, the sources also mention Hubble data. Hubble apparently helped pin down its size. The nucleus was estimated at less than six kilometers across. So what about that? Does that size fit the weird profile or is it more normal? You know, less than six kilometers. That's actually pretty standard for comets in our solar system. We see them range from, you know, maybe a few hundred meters up to tens of kilometers. So the size itself isn't the really strange part. But when you put it together with everything else, an interstellar object, this bizarre reflective tail, the nickel surface, the fact that its size is kind of normal almost makes the other features stand out even more. It doesn't fit neatly into any box. It, yeah. it stops us from saying, oh, it's just a big weird one or a small weird one. It's just weird in specific ways while yeah. being normal in others, like a puzzle with mismatched pieces. Yeah, the plot thickens. And another piece of that puzzle uh, mentioned in the sources is its CO2 composition, carbon dioxide. Hmm. How does CO2 fit into this, this increasingly strange picture of three ILS? Right, the CO2. That's another crucial bit. And honestly, it adds to the confusion in some ways. See, CO2 carbon dioxide is really volatile. It turns from ice to gas really easily, even way out in the cold parts of space. Okay. And that outgassing, that's usually what drives a comet's activity. It makes the fuzzy coma, the atmosphere around the nucleus. And yeah, it helps make the normal tails we expect. So finding CO2 on 3i Atlas in one way makes sense. It implies it formed somewhere very cold, probably far from whatever star it came from. Standard comet stuff. But there's always a but with this thing, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Here's the tricky part. 
how do you have a comet that's actively outgassing CO2, which should be creating a normal tail pushed away from the sun? Uh -huh. How do you square that with observing this weird sun-facing reflection instead? It's a real scientific head-scratcher. Ah, okay. So it has the fuel for a normal tail, but it's showing this reflection thing instead. Exactly. It creates this contradiction. Were both things happening? Was CO2 maybe only coming off parts of the nucleus not covered by this nickel layer? Or was the reflective bit doing something dynamic? The sources suggest this, this sort of duality, made it incredibly hard to figure out what was really going on. It led to intense debate, trying to model something that just didn't follow the rules. Scientists basically had to rethink how they even approach understanding objects like this. Wow. It really sounds like 3i Atlas just threw one curveball after another at astronomers. Not just one strange thing, but like a whole collection of puzzles that don't quite fit together easily. Which brings us to, well, probably the most provocative part mentioned in your sources. Amidst all this confusion, all the attempts to explain it naturally, there was apparently some discussion about the possibility of an artificial nature. The source phrasing was, Kamuginans sifat buatan, possibility of artificial nature. Now we need to be super clear. The sources frame this as a discussion, a possibility being considered absolutely not a conclusion. But how does the scientific community, which is typically very conservative, even get to the point of, you know, entertaining that kind of idea, even speculatively? That's a really important question, and it gets to the heart of the scientific method, actually. When you're faced with something so consistently strange, observations that just don't line up with any standard natural explanation, well, rigorous science demands you consider all possibilities, even the really out there ones. It's about being thorough. So it's not about jumping to conclusions, but about not ruling things out prematurely. Precisely. It's about critical thinking. When every natural explanation you try either fails or requires some really extraordinary, maybe contrived assumptions, then purely in the spirit of intellectual honesty and completeness, the community has to ask, OK, what else could possibly explain this collection of anomalies? Mm. For three atlas, it was that combination. The fake out tail reflection, the weird nickel surface, the CO2 activity that didn't produce the expected result, multiple independent oddities. When you have that pile up of the unexplained, you start to uh, very cautiously consider if maybe an explanation outside the natural framework might hypothetically fit the data better. Again, this isn't endorsement. It's about extreme scientific caution. Hmm. You have to be open to thinking broadly when nature throws you something truly unprecedented. You explore it, you test it, you look for more evidence. Often further study reveals a natural explanation after all, maybe one we hadn't thought of. But the initial consideration, even of something like artificial, can be part of that rigorous process when faced with truly baffling data. It pushes boundaries. That makes sense. It's about exploring the edges of possibility when the known explanations just aren't cutting it. So let's try and wrap our heads around this. What does the whole story of 3IT LAS mean for you know, the bigger picture? Our understanding of interstellar objects, maybe even life elsewhere? We've covered its journey from interstellar space, that bizarre sun-facing reflection, the nickel surface, the CO2 puzzle, and yeah, even this incredible speculation about its fundamental nature. It really was a visitor that challenged everything. Absolutely. If you connect the dots, 3i Atlas isn't just some random comet that passed through. It represents a profound challenge to our scientific models, our paradigms. It tells us pretty forcefully that we need to be prepared for surprises. Every single weird aspect, the reflection, the nickel, the way it seemed to defy basic cometary physics, prompting that artificial discussion, it all underscores how much we don't know. Right. Especially about things originating from beyond our own solar system's cradle. These anomalies, they push science forward. They force us to question assumptions, to develop new theories, to look harder. It's a stark reminder that the universe is probably far more diverse and maybe even stranger than our current understanding allows for. There's just so much more to learn. A challenge, but also an invitation to learn more. That's a great way to put it. It really does emphasize the vastness of the unknown out there. And maybe that leads to a final thought for everyone listening. As you think about 3i Atlas, consider this. If just one object drifting in from another star system can bring with it this many deep mysteries, mysteries that make us question definitions, chemistry, physics, even origins, then what other truly astonishing secret, what other phenomena we can barely even conceive of right now might be hiding out there in the vastness of space, just waiting for us to find them? Definitely something to ponder. Keep looking up and keep exploring.